Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst WWE costumes. For this list, we'll be ranking the most outlandishly bad WTF or boneheaded costume decisions in WWE history. Because they can't all be winners, right? Know of any personal fashion fouls or faux pas from the WWE wardrobe department that we missed? Let us know in those comments below. Number 10. The Spirit Squad Now, the first entry on our list isn't necessarily bad on its own, but rather it's the context that makes it feel like such a misfire. Male cheerleaders undeniably earn their place on the sports field, but they don't feel like a great fit for the squared circle. And so, the Spirit Squad, well, they just all looked silly. The matching green uniforms, pom-poms, headbands, and other bits and bobs were a bad gimmick from the start. No wonder the group became something of a joke amongst the WWE roster. The only real lasting legacy from this team was former member Nikki, who works with the company to this day as Dolph Ziggler. Number 9. Rocky Maivia He wasn't The Rock just yet. This third-generation WWE superstar made his debut as a very generic and very green babyface, complete with a ridiculously over-the-top outfit. He hit the ring for his first match at Survivor Series 1996, all smiles, vigor, and optimistic energy. It just didn't fit with the pseudo-Samoan warrior get-up. The blue streamers, the cheap-looking neck piece, and matching armbands, it all looks like it was thrown together at the last minute. There's no rhyme or reason as to why Rocky looked so bad, but the crowd eventually turned on him and essentially booed him into heeldom, sending him down the path that would eventually lead to The Rock. So hey, it's not all that bad. Number 8. Viscera Poor Viscera. It didn't matter whether he was wrestling as Mabel, Big Daddy V, or even as a member of Men on a Mission. He always seemed to get saddled with a horrible wardrobe. Viscera was a big dude, but that didn't mean his costumes had to be so baggy and poorly tailored, right? Ill-fitting leather trench coats that made him look like an extra from Blade, suspenders with no shirts, and painfully gaudy outfits were just some of the bad ideas that Frazier donned in the ring. He changed often, but never for the better. Number 7. Michael Cole We got two words for you. Orange singlet. That was what longtime WWE announcer Michael Cole wore for his match against Jerry the King Lawler at WrestleMania 27. Although today Cole has embraced weight training and fitness, the veteran play-by-play -play commentator wasn't exactly in peak physical condition back in 2011. As a result, his matching collegiate singlet and headgear look pretty ridiculous and on the nose as Cole made his in-ring debut. Of course, it was intentional for Cole to look ridiculous as part of the angle, but that doesn't change the fact that it made for one heck of a jarring mental image. Number 6. Battle Cat He-Man, this definitely is not. Battle Cat was a blink-and-you-miss-it character during some of the WWF's darkest days in the early 90s. Just one of the company's many silly ideas that didn't match. The man who first played Battle Cat originally competed in the company under the name Brady Bone. But this gimmick had him, born Dean Peters, wearing an on-the-nose cat mask in an attempt to… act more feral, we think. It didn't work. Not even when Battle Cat made claw shapes with his hands or tried to use his cat-like agility to win matches. Chalk this one up to yet another bad idea that should have never made it to television. Number 5. The Gobbledygooker It's one of the most infamous missteps in WWE history, a Survivor Series mystery that should have stayed that way. The thing is, the Gobbledygooker's debut was hyped big time prior to Survivor Series 1990. Everyone was on the edge of their seats, wondering what was lurking inside that giant egg. So, when a giant ridiculous turkey creature broke through the prop and started dancing with Mean Gene Oakland, well, the writing was officially on the wall that this was a bad idea. We're not sure whether the Gooku was intended to be a wrestler or just a bizarre one-off, but it instantly became part of boneheaded pro wrestling lore. Number 4. The Artist Formerly Known as Gold Dust. Don't get us wrong, we love Goldust as much as we love Dustin Runnels, the man behind the character. 
For this entry, we're singling out a very specific look from Goldust's enviable career in the squared circle, his artist period. Maybe it was the ball gag, the unflattering cut of the clothes. Who are we kidding? It was the ball gag. Goldust was being managed by Luna Vachon at this time, and his costume seemed to be a hodgepodge of whatever outrageous material was available backstage. Runnels made a lot of outfits work throughout his career, from the original yellow jumpsuit to the iconic black and yellow combo he wore near the end of his WWE tenure. This, however, was just bad. Number 3. Bastion Booger Some pro wrestlers get lucky and go through one or two gimmicks before finding one that works. Then there are those like Mike Shaw, who move from idea to idea throughout their careers with little to no consistency. Although Shaw's best-known gimmick might be the Norman the Lunatic, he's arguably better known for the various bad looks he's had over the years. Friar Ferguson was one, but it's Bastion Booger that earns him a spot on the podium. Designed to be disgusting, wearing tights, can we call these tights? That were purposefully designed way too small, Booger left absolutely nothing of Shaw's to the imagination. Thankfully, Bastion Booger never received a main event push, as we don't think we could have handled seeing this getup on a weekly basis. Number 2. Max Moon Beware, behind every bad gimmick, there just might lurk the heart of a champion. Case in point, Lucha Libre legend Conan was one of the men who wrestled for the WWF under the very embarrassing moniker of Max Moon. The idea behind the character is actually fairly solid, a real-life adaptation of a Japanese anime-styled cyborg, complete with a prop gimmick cannon. Unfortunately, the execution left much room for improvement. The firehose rings don't really work, the corresponding mask is awkward, and the color scheme looks as if Ultraman got dressed in the dark. It wasn't intimidating, effective, or even really cool, but rather poor execution of an idea that probably needed a couple more drafts before hitting the ring. Number 1. Giant Gonzalez Someone out there knows exactly who it was that thought a giant furry man suit was a good idea for the grandest stage of them all. George Gonzalez was a basketball player turned professional wrestler who worked for WCW for a couple years before making his way to the WWE. The giant Gonzalez suit with fake anatomic muscles and body hair debuted before the man's WrestleMania match against The Undertaker. But it's that mental image of Gonzalez facing the dead man that's burned into the memories of many wrestling fans. Like, why couldn't we put the giant in normal clothes? Why the suit? We're still traumatized and we want answers. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.